I tested the best travel cameras out there. And what I learned is like travel cameras are super specific to the person and how they travel. Some people just want a casual camera to fire off a quick photo or video, while some people like to slow down and turn their photos and videos into art. So in this video, we're gonna look at the best travel cameras out there for every kind of traveler so you can find the best camera for you. And the first camera on this list might actually be the perfect all-around camera for most people. It's compact, but with some seriously impressive power, and that is the Nikon Z30. The Z30 has a sleek and very compact design, especially if you pair it with the kit lens, but it has a really nice deep grip and a really satisfying feeling in your hands. It really feels like a proper camera, and the button and menu layout is really user-friendly and easy to figure out. But the onboard audio is in fact top-notch and really good for vlogging. You really don't need an external mic with this camera. And the kit lens that the Nikon Z30 comes with is without a doubt the best kit lens I have ever used. It delivers really sharp images, but also has vibration reduction for smoothing out your handheld footage. If you want the best pricing on the Nikon Z30, along with the other cameras I mentioned today, I'm gonna leave links in the description down below. But what's inside the camera? The Z30 packs a 20 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is plenty of resolution for travel cameras. You can crop in, zoom into your photos without any problem. Plus, the Nikon Z30 is surprisingly good in low light because of that 20 megapixel sensor. In terms of photos, it shoots 11 frames per second, which is exactly what you need while traveling to capture any kind of fast moving action, perfect for busy city streets or cannonballs in the pool. And video doesn't disappoint either. It's 4K video at 24 and 30 frames per second and it is ultra crisp, but it also has slow motion modes. At full HD, it shoots 60 frames per second for two times slow motion and 120 frames per second. Slow motion is really useful for capturing those epic travel moments and really making things feel bigger than they really were. And it also has really reliable autofocus. It never really misses, but it also has touch autofocus if you use the screen on the back. Speaking of the screen on the back, it also has a side articulating screen so you can see yourself. By the way, so the one thing that's missing from the Z30 is that it doesn't have a flash, which is a must have for shooting in dark environments. But the Z30 actually has a brother, and that is the Nikon Z50, which does have a flash and a digital viewfinder. But instead of a side articulating screen so you can see yourself, it only has a tilt screen for high angle and low angle shots. But everything else is exactly the same. Overall, the Z30 is a great Swiss army knife of a camera and will meet the needs of most travelers. And I really wouldn't hesitate to pick one up. It's a fantastic camera. However, if you're someone that wants more than a casual camera and you want something with real horsepower inside of it, and you really want the best of the best, the Canon R10 is without a doubt one of the best travel cameras out there. The R10 is slightly bigger, but it's still pretty compact and very, very light. The design is extremely user-friendly, which is what Canon cameras are known for, they're easy to pick up and just get great results. The R10 kind of puts everything on easy mode because of how much power there is inside of this camera. It shoots at a ridiculous 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and 23 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. It's pretty much impossible to miss your shots. Most cameras out there only shoot at five or 10 frames per second. Along with that, it also has stellar autofocus with subject detect for people, cars, and animals, plus image stabilization, so your video is ultra smooth. Canon honestly does 90% of the work for you, but video is where the magic really happens. The R10 does two things for video that I'm pretty sure most people are looking for in their travel camera. How do I know this? because I read the comments. The Canon R10 shoots the prettiest 4K you will ever see at both 24 and 30 frames per second. And the reason for that is it's actually downsampled from 6K where it takes all of the rich goodness of 6K video and squeezes it into a 4K package that's easier to edit. And the second thing that I know all of you guys look for in your camera is that it also does 4K at 60 frames per second for two times slow motion which is perfect for capturing those travel moments in a really epic way. However, the camera does crop or zoom in to your 4K 60p footage, but it still looks great in 4K 60p full frame without a crop is really more of a pro camera. However, I do have a camera later in this list 
that does exactly that. And if you really love slow motion, like me, the Canon R10 also does 120 frames per second in full HD. All these video modes are also recorded in 10-bit colors. So when it comes to editing your color, you're gonna have a lot of room to play around if you decide to edit your travel videos. Overall, the Canon R10 is one of the best travel cameras you can get right now. It's great for someone who wants to just pick up a camera, get great results, and focus on appreciating the travel moment, but you really want the best of the best when it comes to your camera. However, if the R10 is just a little bit out of your price range or you want something a little bit smaller, there's also another camera and that is the Sony ZV-E10. The ZV-E10 is a great budget alternative to the R10. The body is smaller and more compact, but the 4K in this camera is just as beautiful because the ZV-E10 also does 4K that is downsampled from 6K and it does slow motion up to 120 frames per second in full HD. Now, there's no major downside to the ZV-10, but it is a bit slower when it comes to photos at only 10 frames per second, and it does not have 10-bit color for video. But the onboard audio is very, very solid, and in fact, better than the Canon R10. So the ZV-E10 might actually be a better deal for someone that doesn't really care about editing their colors. But I know a lot of you guys want more than just a casual camera to take photos here and there. I know a lot of you guys want to slow down and really create art with your travel photos and videos, and you want to do it at a pro level and leave people stunned. In that case, let's talk about the highest resolution travel camera that you can possibly get, and that is the Fuji X-T5. And don't make the mistake of ignoring this camera just because it's Fuji, because the X-T5 is miles ahead of its competition. And like any good travel camera, the X-T5 is ultra compact and light, but it's also made of atomized aluminum. The X-T5 can pretty much survive any kind of environment. And it also has the look of a vintage camera, but with all the modes and dials and buttons of a modern camera. And let's be honest, the X-T5 is absolutely beautiful. But the coolest thing about the X-T5 is the fact that it has a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is pretty much a double the Canon R10 and most of the cameras out there. And forget editing your photos with this camera because it has built-in film emulations that give both your photos and videos this amazing stylized look. Especially when it comes to travel photos and videos, this camera is going to give you photos and videos that look 10 times better than anything from Canon or Sony without any editing. And if you like the insane amount of horsepower in the Canon R10, the X-T5 shoots 15 frames per second, which is exactly what the Canon R10 does, but the X-T5 allows you to shoot up to a thousand photos before this camera needs a break. It's truly impressive. And in electronic shutter mode, it shoots 20 frames per second and allows you to shoot up to 168 photos. But video is where the real magic happens because the X-T5 actually gets used a lot by professional travel filmmakers. It shoots 4K up to 24 and 30 frames per second. And of course, it is downsampled from 6K and it also shoots 4K at 60 frames per second without any cropping. This is a really hard feature to find in cameras in general, and Fuji X-T5 actually does it at the lowest price point. And the X-T5 also has a unique 4x3 mode, which is kind of square, and in that mode it shoots 6.2K, which is probably overkill for most people, but sometimes you gotta flex. So if you're looking for a powerful travel camera that will stay with you for years and years, and you won't even need to think about an upgrade, the X-T5 is without a doubt the best travel camera out there. But there's one thing the X-T5 is missing, and in fact, every camera on this list is missing, and that is a full frame sensor. But what is a full frame sensor and why you need one? Let's talk about it with the Sony A7C. The A7C is probably the only full frame camera that you can actually use as a travel camera because while it has the power of a professional camera, it still comes in a super small and easy to carry body. And I know this because I have one. I've had one for years and this is the best travel camera I've personally ever owned. The A7C has a really compact body which is actually made of metal and it has a really simple button and menu layout with a side articulating screen so you can also see yourself. This totally works as a vlogging camera with a 20 millimeter lens, but also it has a digital viewfinder so you can actually hold it up to your face 
And this is a really rare combination in such a small camera that also has a full frame. And because it's a professional camera, it also has a really large battery life that will last you several days when it comes to photos and several hours for video. But what's inside the a7C is the interesting part. It has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. If you're not familiar with full frame sensors, it's essentially a bigger sensor, about twice the size. And it gives you not only a wider field of view, so you can get the stunning, gorgeous landscape, but it also makes your portraits better by having more depth of field behind your subject and more environment around your subject so you can really show where they are. But also, because it's a bigger sensor, you're able to capture more light, thus more detail. The a7C is also terrific in low light as well. You can shoot as high as 10,000, if not 20,000 ISO, without any problem. In terms of photos, it shoots 10 frames per second in stunning full frame 14-bit raw photos. You have such an enchanting look with these photos and you can really push them when it comes to editing. The autofocus is also particularly good. Sony is known for having really good autofocus and the a7C is no different. In terms of video, it does 4K that is downsampled from 6K and it has full HD up to 120 frames per second for five times slow motion. However, I don't recommend the a7C as a video camera because it's only 8-bit video, where nowadays you can easily get a 10-bit camera, and full-frame 10-bit video tends to get pretty expensive. At that point, you're looking at a pro video shooter camera, in which case you should check out my video on best cameras for video. I really do recommend the a7C to someone who is very, very serious about their travel photography, and you really want the best that you can possibly get in terms of photos, but you want it in a small, compact body like the a7c. I'm going to leave links in the description down below for all of the cameras that we talked about today. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.